It's my lucky day. I'm down here in uh, Sebastian and I'm with uh, Bob O'Brien. Bob has OBTV. If you haven't seen it, you need to go on YouTube and see it. It's got a lot of informal instructional uh, advice. When I need uh, some instruction, usually I'll go and watch his stuff, dude. <laughs> but, you, uh, I, you know, I, I put out my four mental uh, principles of hitting in the box. When you get in the box, what should you do? And, and Bob, just to update you, you know, I'm talking about number one is uh, your attitude. You got to have a positive attitude in the box. And uh, I'm not going to expand on that. You know what I'm talking about. The second one is a strategy or a plan. But I say uh, attitude, strategy. Then we go to aggressiveness, aggressiveness once you get in the box. And finally, have amnesia. What do you think of that, buddy? You take it from here. I love it. I love it. The four A's. We'll start with the first one. Uh, and that's attitude. A lot of times we get in the box and what the guy did ahead of us kind of gets us fired up a little bit. If, the, if you get three hits in a row, we all want to hit, all right? There's a fight at the bat rack when that happens. <laughs> but the good hitter is the one that can turn an inning around. If the first two guys make an out and nobody's on, you can feel the momentum, you know, leave the dugout. So it takes a, a, a good hitter to get in there and get that rally going again. How many times have we seen uh, four or five runs scored with two outs. Yeah. And again, a lot of that is attitude rollover, but I like that attitude rollover. You have to flip over. the attitude sometimes. If the first two guys made an out, you got to tell yourself, "Hey, he's throwing an underhand. I need to be the starter here. Let's get this inning going." However, if the couple guys got a, on ahead of you, yes, take that, take that positiveness and run with it. We call Ant Mo, Ant Momentum. We always want to keep Ant Mo in our dugout. Don't let Aunt Mo go to the other team's dugout. Dude, I love it. So momentum <laughs> is everything in softball and sports. Yeah. All right, In basketball, you see a team go on a run. They'll go on a 10, 15 run. It's all about momentum. Yeah. You start feeling good about things when the rest of the team is going good. That's the easy part. The hard part is when things are going bad, somebody being a leader and changing it and changing and get Aunt Mo back into your dugout by getting a big hit. And hopefully it's contagious. We always have an expression that hitting's contagious. Oh, absolutely, yeah. man. That, I mean, the momentum is contagious. And the other thing, you know, I was talking to Mike Masenko yesterday, and he was telling me how even he needed – he had Mr. Uh, Dave, Dave uh, Neal on, on steals. He had him to, to, you know, get in his ear when he was going bad. And he actually told me his mother, be, you know, when she was out, it, it would, would help him. Yeah. But what do you think about that? I always had, like, Dave Reed or, or Roger Wilt that, you know, guys that played me behind me could know if I was doing something wrong they'd tell me what do you think you gotta have a wingman there you go. Alan Tanner's my wingman we played together for the eight years that I've been playing and uh, when I do something wrong he'll be the first one to tell me hey you dropped your hands you know you chased a bad pitch a lot of times I'll know it but it's nice to hear someone else say it just just to remind you sometimes. yeah absolutely well yeah it, and then it, my wife will help me sometimes Ed, when I'm pitching uh -huh. sometimes I'll throw a pitch and I'll be back pedaling she'll yell at me to set my feet because <laughs> well, you, we all know that as a pitcher especially with no screen when you're playing travel ball you got to set your feet and sometimes we end up just drifting and now the ball comes to us and you're moving backward and you got no lateral movement yeah you know and let me go let me spin off that a little bit you know i was watching a guy i think it was antonelli you know i watch a lot of these videos get you know pick everybody's brain i mean that's what you need to do but he said that everybody has a coach even uh even uh uh tom brady oh, and yeah. And what's that great basketball player? Uh, several of them. No, several. LeBron, LeBron James. Yeah. Even he, he has even three even coaches Michael or something. Jordan had some yeah, so we all need coaches, sure. right? We all need somebody to, so, to, to help us out when things aren't going good. And yeah, because exactly. we can't see our own swing. No. So if you've got a teammate, maybe guy on deck or somewhere, just have them watch you and just, hey, yeah. did I drop my hands on that? Going yes, too early. Did. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next one uh, strategy. I mean, before you get into what, what about that one? Strategy's huge. Uh, a lot of times there's some things you can do in the on deck circle. You look and see what the pitcher's doing. All right, does he have a best pitch? Is he throwing a real nice knuckleball today? Is he throwing a spinner? Uh, is he throwing a breaking ball depending on the win? Is he throwing it deep all the time? So you've got to watch and see what the pitcher is doing. So when you get in here, you can either attack his strength and don't let him get you out with that. Just the other day, I was two for four uh, in a game where the wind was blowing out and the pitcher was throwing a pretty good knuckleball. And twice he got me because I swung at bad pitches. They were a little short, and then because there was a knuckle and the wind blowing out, they fell even farther short. And I went after him, thinking I can hit any pitch in softball. You can't. 
That's when you get in trouble, right? When yeah. you think you get hit, you know, every that'll go to my doable, other point. Not when, every pitch is drivable. Yeah. The bad news, the good news of softball is you never swing and miss. The bad <laughs> well, news no, don't say never. There's people that do swing and miss. The bad news of softball is you never swing and miss. So in baseball, if you swing at a bad pitch, a high one, a low one, you miss it. Well, that's only strike one. Not an out. In softball, you swing at a bad pitch, you hit it, unfortunately. Yeah, but pretty. you're not going to hit it very well or very yeah. far. So you have to. So the game plan, my game plan every time, Ed, is when I get up, I look for two holes instead of one. I'll look around and see where the defense is, and I'll pick out two holes. A lot of people will pick out one hole, and then they'll try to force pitches into that hole. Say the five, six hole is wide open for you. All right, and you say, all right, I'm and going you're five, force six hole. Pit, yeah. And now he throws one on the outer half of the board, strike two. All right. But let me stop you right there because okay. what you're doing is that's the that's the strategy before you get in the box. But when you get in the box, you react to the pitch, right? Now I execute my strategy would be now if I pick two spots, say I pick the left center gap and the right center gap against a five-man infield and three outfielders. If it's on the inner half of the board, I'll hit the left center gap. If it's on the outer half of the board, I'll hit the right center gap. So you're reacting to it. Right, from but the... if, I'm, if I have only one hole and it's a five-six hole and he throws me two straight pitches outside, now I'm going to try to take an outside pitch and pull it into the five-six hole. That's a bad a move, man. Out, I'll roll over that and either hit it to the pitcher or hit it to the shortstop. So my philosophy all the time is pick out two spots, not just one, and then let the pitch dictate which spot you let, let me go to what happened today. You know, I was b batting behind you, and uh, you said, well, let me, I'm going to go to that third baseline, Ed, if I get the pitch. So what was so that was your thought going in. Exactly. So you recognized, I guess, the first pitch because you drilled it right down that right. third baseline. I didn't want to hit a solo home run, all right? So I looked around, and I saw the left fielder way off the line. So I was having fun with you and said, Fun. I, I was impressed. Dude. And notice I did say, if I get the pitch. You did. And, and how did you recognize your pitch? Because what? exactly, if, if, it's on the, if it was on the inner half, I was going to go line. If it was on the outer half, I was going to go to the right of him in the gap. Now, is that instinctive or a decision? Uh, I mean, I kind of, you know, that's, that's where I think it's instinctive, but you're thinking, but it's your subconscious mind. Thing. But I told you ahead of time where I was going. Yeah, no, no, no. So I had a strategy. Yeah. And then I got the right pitch to execute the strategy. And then I went ahead and hit it. I don't think people pick on that left field line enough. Especially I agree. Especially with no strikes or just the one strike. Especially line. me. <laughs> Go for that line. If you miss, you miss foul. No big deal. Now you get another shot at it. So, well, let's move on to aggressive, being aggressive in a box. I, you know, I actually put a video out on it. and uh, So give me that what you could consider being aggressive in the box. Being aggressive in the box is hitting the first strike. Most of the time we play with a one-on-one -on -one count, right? That's the way the softball world is these days. I think every association except one starts with a one-on-one -on -one count. So What one is that? I don't even know. What, what? Uh, either ISSA or... Uh, I think they changed. No, I but think I'm, it's SPA. Oh, SPA, it's SPA they're, they're, they're still full goes, count now? I think they go okay. zero, zero. We haven't played that in a while. So you already got one strike on you, okay? We all know that hitting with two strikes is a little more difficult. The major league average, years ago there was a study done and the major league average from a one from a one one count to a one two count one one count the major league average was 300. one two count the average went down to 123. all right and a two two count it's not much better like 127. so hitting with two strikes is a little more difficult because you can't be as selective as selective all right so the trick is to not let them get two strikes on you i struck out three times my whole senior year in high school and my philosophy was, don't let them get, you can't strike out if you don't have two strikes on you. That's so I true. never let the pitcher get two strikes on me. I was aggressive early in the count, so I didn't have to take that defensive swing. That works in softball too, sure for sure, does. yeah. But here's what happens a lot of time in softball, Ed. The 3-1 pitch. You're up there one-on-one, -on -one, he throws you a ball, he throws you a ball. You know what most people do on 3-1? Let it go. Let they it take go. it. They take it, yeah. But as a pitcher... That's the only pitch that yeah. I'm trying to hit the middle of the middle board of the plate, on. Yeah. I'm trying to hit the middle of the board on three one. All the others I'm trying to come as close to the edge. What of about the board full count? Because I like I I made my career on hitting home runs in full count. But that was back when we get you could look at all these pitches and you know, and I was more calm by the time sure. the fourth pitch came. Sure. Well again, once there's two strikes on you, 
most of us swing at the next pitch. I know I look back at all my, my videos from watching right. it, and there's a lot of time. Once I get two on me, you're swinging. I'm swinging if it's close. And that's that's what I call it. Don't let the umpire, yeah, don't let yeah. the umpire, you know, do 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 you know, control the game, yeah. if you will. So the word is what I used to call was selective but aggressive. Selective yeah, I like but that. aggressive. I like that. But don't let him get two strikes on you. Go ahead and yeah. now on three one, get ready to hit. Yeah. He's gonna throw you a biscuit. Hit that. And a lot of teams have a rule that don't swing at three one. You gotta get yeah. rid of that rule. Yeah. That's a culture, and well, in baseball, that's a beautiful set. That, that that's where you know, you well, know, three zero and three one are different stories. Yeah. In baseball, it's the three zero pitch. Don't swing at it. You know, if you make it out on three zero, yeah, everybody, your teammates, you're going to be all pissed over. off. Yeah, exactly. Three one is a little bit different, and then in softball, the three one pitch, be aggressive on that and go yeah. ahead and hit that because you're always going to get three one because you got one already. Yeah. Hey, well, let's move on to uh, the fourth one, which is amnesia, and people laugh about it. But what do you think about that? Short term memory. All right. Well, Why is luckily that? Luckily, at our age, we, <laughs> we, we got have short, short term. term. But no, you know. But unfortunately, maybe I'm, I'm I forget a lot of stuff. But yeah, I have a hard time sometimes pushing off when I make a bad swing. Yep. You know. Well, nobody wants to make it out. Okay. So the amnesia part, and I'm gonna go back to that game. Okay. I was two for four, and I came up a fifth time. And he actually walked a guy to get to me. Yeah, I remember you telling me he that. He walked a guy to get to me to load the bases. Even happens right. to be Bob O'Brien. So I have to have short-term memory loss. you got to forget about it. The good Lord put the eyes in the front of our head and not in the back to see where we're going, not where we've been. Oh, there right. it is, the Bob so O'Brien. OB. So I had to do everything that we just talked about. My attitude, I had to think positive. I had to get in the box and shake off two outs. I rarely make two outs in a game. All right. Uh, I had to shake that off. Actually, I had made three outs. I was one for four at the time. So I had to really shake that off and tell myself, all right, let's go. He's throwing it underhand. Big situation. <laughs> I had to be aggressive. Yeah, didn't yeah. want to let him get two on me yeah, with that, yeah, that yeah. knuckleball that he was going to throw me. And then I had to have that short term. I had to have amnesia. I had to forget about the other swings. All right, so I had to regroup, get in there. I hit a grand slam and got the runs that we needed, which was big. Uh, Skip Bertman. Great coach at LSU for many years and was at Miami when he started his career. Skip Berman had a toilet, a little portable toilet that he'd kept in the dugout. And whenever somebody did anything wrong in the field or up the bat, he'd make them flush the toilet. <laughs> he'd make them flush That's the first toilet. time I heard it. And what, what we're doing there is we're getting rid of it. Getting we're rid getting of it. Rid of the bad. Oh, man. Getting rid so, of the bad hey, stuff. Get it rid of it. Get it out I of like an am yeah. amnesia better than flushing it the is. toilet. But I, that's probably a good metaphor. Yeah. So that's what you got to do. So he would make the kids come in, and it would make the sound and everything. It was kind oh, of really? funny. They'd hit the little button. Flush it. And you'd have the flushing sound. Boy, in a psychology world, that's probably really a, a great uh, thing to do, really, yeah. right? I mean, And then my last thing, Ed, is... Uh, I have a 6-2-2 rule, all right? It used to, my outs used to bother me, all right? I yeah, was I always looking for the perfect weekend. I want to yeah. go 25 for 25. You know, that's great if you do, but it's really not, it's just not going to happen week in and week out. Yeah, for so sure. So what you don't want to do is when you do make that one out, you don't want it to snowball into a second out or a third out. So you've got to have that amnesia. But I came up with a 6-2-2 rule. Out of every 10 at bats, I'm going to get on base six times, whether it's a base hit or a walk. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make two outs. Once I, and that's an 800 hitter. Yeah. I'll take 800. Oh, 800 hitter, you're, you're all world. Yeah, you're all world. I'll take 800. So just accept that you're going to make two outs every 10 at bats. So if you accept that, then it doesn't snowball into the next one. You don't take it into the next at bat with you. You say, all right, he got me. You know, or I hit it right at somebody or whatever. It's the last two at bats, all right? You're going to get on base six times. You're going to make two outs. It's the last two. You've got to get lucky sometimes. you got to miss hit a ball and it falls. you got to hit it hard and somebody makes an error. Those two lucky times that you get is the difference between a 600 hitter and an 800. You know what I say about that? It's not how good your good shots are. It's how good your bad shots are. Exactly. And you said it in a different exactly. way. Exactly. So now hold, hold on, two. yeah, hold on just a minute, because I want to. You're a doctor. I've seen it on your video. <laughs> Self-proclaimed. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I believe you're a good doctor. But what happens when you know, like for me, if I have a good run going, I could be like 18 for 18, and the last time up, I, I make an out. I mean, 
what happened to me? Well, you put in, that's and I've had that before too. I'm looking for that perfect weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so you put too much pressure on it. Too, maybe pressure thinking on too much. Yourself. Yeah, you weren't thinking about that. You know, the first couple of days, but then you look up and it's like it's like the perfect game. Yeah. I threw a no hitter in the Cape Cod League. Did you? Right. That's cool. It was the first one in 15 years, 1985. Wow. Well, in the seventh inning, we had a rally going, all right? So I got up and went down the right field line to throw a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, in Orleans, where I played in Cape Cod, the right field line was a little amphitheater hill where everybody sat. And they had good crowds in the Cape Cod League. So everybody's sitting there. So I get up and went down the line and to play catch because it's a long inning. Mm -hmm. My boss from the Captain Linnell House, the restaurant I worked at while mm -hmm. I was there, mm -hmm. he came down the hill and he walks up to me. And he says, "Hey, Obi, I hear you got a no hitter going." Oh and boy! Everybody around him started screaming at him, started yelling at him. Don't so say we, nothing well, to nobody. Exactly. So the guy that's throwing a no hitter is the loneliest guy. Guy in the yeah. Guy. Nobody sits next to yeah. him. Nobody would talk yeah. about it because. They think that they're jinxing you by telling you about it. Well, that's that same thing with 17 for 17. No, I get You're it. Looking for that 18. Because there was a guy on our team who was 16 for 16, and I was interviewing. I didn't say a damn word about it because I agreed to. <laughs> yeah. But listen, let's close this thing out with All your right. best, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, uh, statements like you say, hey, don't play. The one I love, man, is first uh -huh. time I heard it in my long career was, don't play the scoreboard, play the, game. play the game. I ain't heard that in 57 years, dude. Give me another one. Oh, uh, put me on the spot. For attitude, uh, again, let's see. Let me think of one. All right, here's another one. Same, same thing. In this world, nothing's ever as good as it seems and nothing's ever as bad, but somewhere in between, reality falls. So don't think that just because you made it, it's not the end of the world, all right? And don't think because you're 17 for 17 that everything's rosy and shiny, all right? Nothing's ever as good as it seems, 17 for 17, and nothing's ever as bad, one for four. Somewhere in between, reality falls. So keep I, that in mind. I think I'm going to make you a doctor of philosophy. That's a Lou dude. Holtz one. Yeah, I know. I love Lou Holtz, no, me dude. Too. That's what, when, when, what's important now? Yeah. I copied it. Man, he's my he's my hero. We got a lot in common, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thank Great you, interview. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>